Elhamdülillah. Ma'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa atiyu Allah, atiyu Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, jahal. And alhamdulillah that Allah gave us this life and granted a faith to it inshaAllah with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And Ahlul Muhammad have an immense belief and that belief is what nourishes everything they do. It's a, a force of life that alhamdulillah has immense blessings. Alhamdulillah. We wanted to say something but we can't figure a way on how to say it. <laughs> Shall I have any questions from, from the last couple nights? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, no yeah, questions, no Sayyidi. Oh, there's no questions either? Or same, or same similar, similar questions. questions. Similar about the meditation and the spiritual practices. How to eliminate how negative, negative forces, forces, bad energy. No. Bad energy. Alhamdulillah, the abundance of, of bad energy is, is everywhere and, and how to, to rid ourselves of that and how to increase our level of belief. We posted a picture of Al-Batar, I believe the spelling is Al-Batar, B-A-T-T-A-R. Is that the one? From the swords of Sayyidina Muhammad the one that we saw in Topkapki in the museum. Let's see where is it. Ya Al-Batar and <coughs> a sword that was given to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and had what was written on it the names of the different Prophets. This was the sword of Sayyidina Dawood salam that he slayed Goliath and it was given in a battle that Prophet had won and it was the sword of the Prophets. Sayyidina Dawood owned the sword, Sayyidina Sulaiman owned the sword, Sayyidina Musa owned the sword, Sayyidina Arun, Harun, Sayyidina Jashua, Sayyidina Zakariya, Sayyidina Yahya and Sayyidina Isa salam, will be given this sword. And the importance of this sword that will be given by Sayyidina Mahdi salam, to Sayyidina Isa salam, to slay the Dajjal. And because Allah has no time, the, everything has an eternal reality. So when we posted the image of that sword and for tabarak and blessings, the people of faith, their faith gets stronger. This is how real this reality is, is they look at that sword, they understand that there is no time with what Allah dressed that sword of realities, that sword that will slay the deception and the, the what that deception represents, it has an immense light on it. It has a light from the oceans of truth, its purpose is to destroy falsehood and the king of falsehood that is arriving upon this earth. Imagine then when the believer looks at that sword and ask Ya Rabbi by your might and your majesty of what you have bestowed upon this reality from its eternal reality, dress us from that light and put the light of that sword within our hearts and within our faith so that now while we're falling under the deceptions of Dajjal, let it to cut and to destroy every type of Dajjal falsehood within us. Ameen. And that's you know from people of faith. As soon as you post it to the people of no faith, wow it's like you, you throw a, 
you hit a stick in a wasp nest that all, all the, the, the crazy madhab people start going wild with this. Take this post off, take this post, this not this, take this post off. And you can see its power because their dajjali belief is they're going to be from Hizbu Dajjal. When the deception and the great deception begins to roam on the earth, those are the first that follow. Those are the first that come against Sayyidina Mahdi And because of bad character, because of anger, because of every dirtiness that lies within them, that's the magnet and the juzbah of Dajjal. That awliya have an attraction and a magnetic juzbah to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And this juzbah is of a, of a haqq and a beatific light for us to understand. And every time we purify ourselves and do good and do our zikr and do our practices that uh, they posted and we've posted many times, they wash the outside and they wash their heart with zikr and istighfar, they perfect their character as an as a example of their dhikr. Because for Allah to say, I oh I'm Ahlul Dhikr and I, and I do salawats but my character is bad and I'm mean and I'm aggressive is of no value. So everything is a complete package. As they do good, they practice good, they eat good, they have a inshaAllah good character. This is a juzbah and a magnetic attraction to the prophetic reality that Prophet Wasallam's beatific magnet will attract only goodness, it doesn't attract any badness. So it's very common sense when we have and exhibit bad characteristics and anger and, and, and all sorts of badness, it's being cleaned by the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad but it's not drawing near by virtue of its opposite. How could the truth draw the falsehood to it? It intercedes and cleans bad character and for all those whom wishing to come to that reality and to be cleaned by the prophetic reality then no doubt it cleans and intercedes and washes away. But when they insist on badness, aggressiveness and bad character by its nature it will not attract into the presence of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad so that's why they encourage us, do good, do good, have good character, exhibit good characteristics, have a beatific heart, a fragrant heart, a loving and compassionate heart, speak in terms of love and belief. And I believe, I believe, I believe until Allah make the belief to be real and to make it to be bountiful, that heart and that soul begins to move into the presence with that juzbah and the magnetic attraction into the reality and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And every type of badness and aggressiveness and bad character is actually working towards the juzbah and the attraction of the dajjal belief. That the dajjal is the same, that he wants the dirtiness, the badness, the bad character. These people whom talk bad they don't even carry the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad At least when they talk and advise people they should be covering their head. They, they don't care to believe that they're Sunni belief and they think they're Sunni. And they don't carry the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad for the believer, the sunnah and Muhammadiyun identity is the most important identity. It's the identity of the king of the heavens. The turban is the crown of the people of paradise. So when they wear their crown, they carry their sunnah, they have the asa, they carry their ring, it's all a symbol of their love for the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad By virtue of this goodness they draw close into that reality. So even the posting of a picture that will destroy and slay the dajjal made all the dajjalis to go angry. How ironic is that? They can't even from now take the image of that light of what it carries with it 
all the Wahhabis began to take that down, take that post down, this is not this, this is not this. It's exactly like the Taweez, it has so much light that their predestined reality of following the Dajjal, they cannot even tolerate that light and its reality. We pray that Allah give us a faith that is strong, Ameen, ya a love a love that is, is sincere Ameen. to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And as these fitnas are opening upon this earth and every type of difficulty that opening upon the earth, the hope and the salvation of believers is to make Allah happy. And Allah's happiest moment is when we're dear and loving to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with these realities and that to give us good character so that that good character opens the oceans of iman and that that iman opens the oceans of maqam al-ihsan in which to see the world of light and the light and the world of light to be wool encompassing and dressing upon us inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shaykh ya Rasul Kareem, same with our taweezes. As soon as you put something from the world of light, how you know that it works is that the world of darkness comes against it. As soon as anything from the heavens appears upon this earth, the world of darkness comes against it. They say, why you have to have this shaykh's picture, these shaykh's pictures? Why you have to have that taweez? Why you have to post the picture of this or post anything that has of a heavenly reality and a heavenly light? What people have embraced themselves knowingly or unknowingly of darkness and dark forces None of them can take any of what they're seeing and that's what makes their energy to go very bad, very negative and because of that negativity it affects that person to say, take that picture down, take this taweez off, take all of these things down because it's agitating and aggravating their energy. And that's why it's so important to put the taweez and put the pictures of the shaykhs, these are all heavenly lights. That what, what can be more powerful than the picture of Sultanul Awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani whom is the Sultan of all saints upon this reality, whom Allah dressed and blessed His holy soul and whom Allah sees through His eyes, hears through His ears, spoke through His tongue and till today speaks through his, the tongue of His heart and uh, is the power of His hands and the movement of His feet, it's a holy hadith al-Qudsi. For that madhab doesn't understand anything. That Allah is, is, is dressing and those awliya are the embodiment of this hadith al-Qudsi. That when my servant approaches, finish their fat and approaches with their voluntary worship, I become the eyes in which they see. They're the embodiment of this holy hadith. So when you put the picture of them in the house, Allah's light sees through their eyes. When you look into their eyes, when you're not feeling good, Who's looking back at you? What is the hadith teachings? That's the problem is the people of no faith, they repeat hadith of which none of them they believe. For if you had believed you would have understood in this holy hadith al-Qudsi on the eyes in which they see. So when you look into the face of awliya, who's looking back at you? Allah Sayyidina Muhammad Malaika, all awliya. So immensity of, of what's being carried on to that face. So of course no doubt Hizb shaitan they don't want the face anywhere. But Hizb iman Hizbullah Ahlul Iman they want that face everywhere. And anything that was in, inscribed for them of verses of Holy Qur'an, they put it and has power. When they display verses of Holy Qur'an it's illuminating lights. When they put the names of their shaykhs these are illuminating lights. If they were given ijazah by Sayyidina Muhammad to distribute those 
those realities, those are illuminating lights. And they are the, the lights of the heaven that illuminate the darkness of this world and for the phase of the world that it's going into now. We said before this sickness is not just a sickness, that sickness is a sickness from inside and there's an outside force. And when the two of them are able to meet they are taking insan down. So it's not only the physical medicine that you take and the physical vitamins but it's also the spiritual. The spiritual medicines and all of the armory that Allah has sent to the believers. That when they have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad more than they love themselves. What do you think then is to carry the ring and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad This ring Sayyidina Sulaiman begged for a ring. He begged for a ring from Allah but in reality he knows he begged for a ring from Sayyidina Muhammad He asked for an authority on dunya because his people were being overtaken by shayateen. And he asked from something from the heavens to grant him and establish him an authority because they don't understand the deen, they think Allah help you. Allah help you by means and by means of humility, they don't understand tawassu. They think everything Allah help you directly, oh, Allah help you directly, the Hizb shaitan and the belief of shaitan is like that. When Allah helped his prophets he helped by means. That he didn't give a power to Sayyidina Sulaiman but he said, I give you a ring. Why? To show humility and to show the haqqaiq is that you need the sunnah of my most beloved. Nothing on this earth will help you except the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and a ring from heavens which was from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Sunnah to Nabi a ring was then bestowed and brought down by virtue of Sayyidina Sulaiman putting the ring on Allah dressed him with a might. And the minute he lost his authority and the jinn stole his ring he became nobody. So Allah didn't bestow the might upon him physically but by means of tawassul gave the might to a ring. When he had made an error because he, he had taken a wife and that wife was from idol worshippers and she insisted that he make an idol of her father just for her to remember, he disobeyed Allah's belief. He made an idol and as a result his order was to pull the ring from him so that his authority would be taken. Of a Prophet of Allah showing that the immensity of tawassul, the might was in the ring. By virtue of that servant putting the ring onto their finger Allah granted them an izza and might. So then people say, oh wow what did you say about the ring? They don't even understand this level of belief and tawassul. And when he made his tawbah and forgiveness the ring was returned and his kingdom was re-established with his might. When Sayyidina Musa salam wanted to part the river and the, this, the, the river that his people needed to be saved by, he didn't make a du'a and the river opened, he made a du'a and nothing opened. So means the water that the parting of the seas that Nabi Musa made a najat for his people, how was that achieved? He was given an asa, he was given a holy staff and a cane and Allah in the final of that story he kept asking, Ya Rabbi open the water, open the water, my people are going to, to perish. Pharaoh is coming from us, my people are angry, Ya Rabbi I'm here at the sea that you told me to come, I'm asking for you to open Ya Rabbi. And Allah reply back into his heart is, take your cane and touch the water, Ya Khalil al-Rahman and ask in the name of Ya Khalil al-Rahman. And then taught him the words in which to open that river and part the sea. So Allah all of Islam is tawassul, all of Islam is the seeking of a means and not the way of arrogant people that they think Allah with them and everything will happen. Allah no I want you to be a humble servant, even you talk to me you need a asad to touch the water. 
What kind of lesson Allah is teaching in humility? All of Islam is tawassul. We don't have to make circumb- circumvallation around a house of stones. Why? You're not a stone worshipper but Allah ordered it, you do it. You have to go to drink from the zamzam. By means of that zamzam and the blessing that Allah put in that water, it could be any water but Allah want you to drink from that water to send you a blessing. The Maqam al-Ibrahim, you pray two rakat behind the, the stone imprint of Sayyidina Ibrahim salam. What about the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Means all of our belief is about the understanding and the reality of seeking a means what we call tawassul. To be a humble servant in this approach to the Divine, the Presence, Ya Rabbi I'm asking to seek a means. And the most beloved means and most powerful means is the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi when I wear a ring from the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad make it to be blessed and to be dressed by the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Empowered Ya Rabbi as you gave power to this presence of Sayyidina Sulaiman, grant us the power to the Ummat al-Muhammad Ummat al-Muhammad and Ummat al-Ashiqeen, the nation that has a love for Sayyidina Muhammad grant the sunnah to become alive for us Ya Rabbi, to become powerful for us Ya Rabbi. As the staff of Nabi Musa Ya Rabbi grant our staff to have power and might to shake the earth Ya Rabbi Allah. Grant us our rings to have the power and izzat of Sayyidina Sulaiman under the power and izzat of Sayyidina Muhammad La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyun azeem Ya Rabbil Arshin azeem Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa wasiri Surat al-Fatiha Click the link now to subscribe.